my darling extraterrestrials. I am Kim, this is Dustmotes and Velicor, and this is my May wrap-up video. I read nine books this month, and last month I read nine books, and everybody was like, Kim, that's a lot of books. And I'm like, it's not enough books, and they're like, still, it's a lot of books. So I need to adjust my yardstick, except I did set a Goodreads goal, and I'm not... I'm behind on my Goodreads goal. So, okay, we're setting the crisis I made up in my head aside, and we're moving on to the books. First up was Tess of the Road by Rachel Hartman. Can we take a minute to appreciate that cover art? They made a mountain range look like a dragon, and I love it. This is not quite a sequel to Serafina and Shadow Scale, but it's in the same universe. It's about a different character. Serafina's half-sister Tess has always been the bad one. One of her aunts, I think. One of her relatives calls her the devil child. Raised in a household devoted to Saint Vit, a misogynistic font of vitriol about how women should act, Tess was curious about the world outside her home, and apparently curiosity is the height of impropriety. She makes the wrong friends, and she's in the process of living with her mistakes when her family decides that it's time for her to enter a nunnery. Tess decides otherwise. She leaves. And that's not nearly as simple as it sounds. This book is a very interesting and nuanced conversation on indoctrination and how it can take a lifetime to heal the wounds that your family has caused. This book is a heavy one. Please look up any content warnings that might affect you. Be safe. Also, I would like to mention that I really enjoy the way Rachel Hartman will go on whole page tangents about linguistic shifts between languages that she created. <laughs> well done, nerd. An Ember in the Ashes by Sabata here. I did not know there was another book coming out. This book was placed in front of me at the library. I read it, and then I read the second one, and now I need the third one. <laughs> Anyway, Laia is a slave and a rebel spy, and Elias is an elite soldier on the verge of desertion. It looks at the political turmoil of the Martial Empire, which is exactly what it sounds like. And there's a prophecy, and you can't forget, the djinn are coming back! So there's a long dormant vein of magic running through this world. And I just, I love it so much that I'm having trouble describing it. Grace and Fury by Tracy Banghart. Bangert? I don't know how to pronounce that one, but this was the first arc that I received from my haul at Y'all West, which was wonderful, by the way. This is about two sisters who live in a country where the superior's consorts, called Graces, are chosen by a nationwide pageant. Only the most beautiful, the most elegant, the most demure rise to the top. Except these traits are only touted to keep women in their place. It is illegal for a woman to know how to read. They may not own property, they have no voice, and the highest position to which they may aspire is that of grace. This book follows two sisters, each on their own path, and when their places are abruptly switched, they have to learn to adapt to the consequences. The Prince and the Dressmaker by Jen Wang. This one is bright and brilliant, and I adore it. It's a graphic novel. I read it in like two hours and it is so beautiful. Oh my goodness. Prince Bastion has a secret. He loves wearing women's gowns. He feels the most confident and the most himself when he is the height of fashion. So he seeks out a new young designer, Francis, to make him fantastic gowns and costumes. And he takes Paris by storm as the fashion icon, Lady Cristalia. The prince and his dressmaker become best friends and the world is looking a little bit brighter when things start getting complicated. This is a fabulous romp about friendship and being true to yourself, and I really can't recommend it enough. An Assassin's Guide to Love and Treason by Virginia Bodecker. This is the second book from the Ark Hall, and it doesn't come out until October, but I guarantee you it's worth the wait. <laughs> In Elizabethan England, Lady Catherine's father is killed by the Queen's men for A, his Catholic faith, and B, treason. 
Catherine escapes into the night and disguises herself as a boy, fleeing to London to inform her father's co-conspirators of his demise and to join their plot. They're going to assassinate the Queen. Toby is a spy in the Queen's service and has been since he was very young. Catholic grumblings, as they put it, have been getting louder of late, and it's his idea to stage a new Shakespeare play to weed out any would-be assassins. It's an intricate, dramatic, occasionally hilarious, and rather poignant story of love and, well, treason. A Torch Against the Night by Sabah Tahir. It took so long to get this one from the library. I had to put it on hold and it took forever. I read three books between reading the first one and the second one. Ugh. This one is more about a quest and self-discovery. And I'm not going to lie, there's a bit of genocide going on in there. Seriously, the third one comes out on June 12th and I am so psyched. Arusha and the End of Time by Roshni Chakshi. My full review is here. Here. I don't know if you can see where I'm pointing because I've put the title, I've put the cover here. This one is a middle grade reader in the vein of Percy Jackson and the Olympians, but with girl protags and Indian mythology and a whole heck of a lot of <laughs> semi non human sidekicks. Enjoy! Queens of Inneslir by Tessa Grattan. Again, check the cards for my full review. The three daughters of the King of Inneslir find themselves at odds when their father begins to lose his mind. This is an intricate, nuanced story about sisterhood and what it takes to rule. Last one, Traitor's Game by Jennifer A. Nielsen. Kestra Dallasor has lived in exile for the last three years, reportedly for her own protection, but mainly it's because her father can't stand her and she keeps getting kidnapped. Summoned home at last and not at all happy about it, she is waylaid by a band of rebels who need her help to overthrow the oppressive Lord and Derek. He's immortal, so that might be a bit of a problem. The rebels are not morally pristine either. They hold her servants hostage as insurance for Kestra's good behavior. Simon and Trina, two rebels with very different motivations, are placed in her service instead to watch her, make sure she complies, and to kill her if she does not. This one is interesting plot-wise, and I'm, I'm going to read the sequel, but I did end up giving it three stars because it's not very compelling and the romance starts way too early. But if it sounds like your cup of tea, then go for it. That's it. Those are the nine books I read in May. I've got to get the average back up. I have high hopes for June. What are you reading right now? Please come talk to me in comments about books. Hmm. A bientôt.